Good evening. Once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do a video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And uh, first of all, if you are watch, if you're watching this video tonight and you are not saved, if you have not uh, committed your life to Jesus Christ and following Him, and you do not have the assurance of salvation, <clears throat> it is my prayer that you will watch this video with an open mind and an open heart and with ears to hear. And then consider subscribing to my channel and just looking for these daily videos and just keep watching them and allow God to speak to your heart. I know the things I talk about on these videos, if you're not a believer, <clears throat> seem incredible, they seem impossible, they seem crazy. <clears throat> and people that watch these videos who are uns unsaved tend to think of people like me as crazy. But I'm here to tell you, I'm doing these videos because I care about you. I do not want to see you left behind. I do not want to see you lost. And I am telling you the truth. The prophecies of the Bible are coming to pass at an alarming rate every single day. God's word is sure and true, and Jesus Christ is your, is your only hope. Again, if you are not saved, just please, you found this video for a reason. God, I believe, led you to this video. And I just pray that you will, again, consider watching these. Watch it all the way through. Watch it with an open heart, open mind. And it's my prayer that God will speak to you through this. We are absolutely <clears throat> living in the last days. There are so many... <laughs> prophecies coming to pass right now exactly the way the Bible said they would. And you haven't seen anything yet. This world is going to get crazier and crazier, more and more violent. Wars, rumors of wars and pestilence, famine, earthquakes. It's going to get really, really bad. There's going to be a one-world government, one-world religion, and eventually a one-world monetary system. And if you do not participate in that one world monetary system known as the mark of the beast you will not be able to buy or sell that's where this world is headed and again I just pray that you will uh, watch this with an open mind now <clears throat> I always like to share some scripture I'm going to do that right away because I got a I mean a bunch of news stories to go over tonight and uh, <laughs> they're just getting more and more uh, important every day that these news stories that are happening um, <clears throat> Let's start first of all, because I'm going to relate these these two scriptures here to uh, one of the first few uh, news stories I'm going to cover. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse starting in verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. That is a pretty good description of, the, of where the world is right now. The Bible says in the last days they will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. Sin is something that's just not even tolerated, not even talked about anymore. Certainly tolerated, but it's definitely not talked about anymore. Not even in the church. <clears throat> so, um, with that, again, I've got a lot to cover. So let's, let's get into a few news stories. Um... <clears throat> First one, I just want to highlight this real quick. Benjamin Watson, football player for the New Orleans Saints, did a post on uh, Facebook about the situation in Ferguson. And it, was, it went viral. It was a very in, in, a really good post. He got a lot of uh, credit for, for being a good post about what's going on with the violence there. Well, interestingly enough, CNN interviewed him about that post. Benjamin Watson is a Christian. And what happened is he started to talk about Jesus Christ. And he said, Jesus died for all of our sins. 
And he, he was talking about that. They shut him off. They disconnected it. He was, his satellite feed was shut off. And they said, oh, we, we lost him. They would not let him proclaim Jesus Christ. Here's another news story. <clears throat> what did Di why did Disney block God? Now, as I'm waiting for this to load, I want to point out, too, that Disney also is now using, as a form of payment, RFID bracelets, just like I'm wearing right here, just this bracelet, except it has an RFID chip in it, and that's how you register, that's how you pay when you're at the park. The RFID chip inside the bracelet is a cashless way of paying. Uh, I just alluded to the one world mark of the beast government and the one world monetary system the RFID type technology <clears throat> will play a part in that or something similar so this is out of Fox News why did Disney block God it turns out you can give thanks for a lot of different for a lot of different folks on the Disney Channel website but you can't thank God I received a Facebook message on Sunday from Julie Anderson of North Carolina. Uh, Julie was writing to tell me about her daughter Lily. Lily celebrated her 10th birthday on Sunday. After church and a delicious lunch at the Golden Corral, the Andersons headed home and Lily made a beeline for the computer. Now, Lily loves the Disney Channel and as she was browsing the channel's website, she asked a question. <clears throat> she, she, excuse me, she noticed a question. The Disney Channel wanted to know what she was thankful for. So Lily typed in her answer. God my family, my church, and my friends. Lily pressed the return key and waited for her answer to appear on the website, but her response did not appear. Instead, a message written in red popped up on the screen. Please be nice, the message read. Lily tried again and again with no luck, so she told her parents. It was Lily's idea alone to include God in her post, Julie told me. As a matter of fact, she was, a, she was in another room from me, and she came and got me when it wouldn't allow, wouldn't allow her to post. Julie retyped the message, and the same red letter warning appeared. We together figured out that the word God was the problem, Julie said. Sure enough, when they removed the word God from the post, the G Disney Channel approved Lily's message, and then Julie contacted me. Uh, <clears throat> There, I'll post, again, as usual, I'm going to post all of these in the description box. Disney came up with a lame excuse. If you read this, you can see what, the, what their excuse for that was. And if you're naive enough to believe their excuse, then uh, you're probably going to be naive enough to accept the mark of the beast down the road as well. Because everything that's happening right now has been prophesied. The world is turning their back on the gospel. They will not allow Jesus Christ anymore. And you think it's, you know... I'm amazed that people can't see this. There's school shootings. It's crazy. If I try to go to a kid's school during the weekday, it's <laughs> the security trying to get in there just to get into the office to leave something for them or pick something up is crazy. Why is that? Because they're not safe. Why aren't they safe? Because we've removed God from the schools. And to make matters worse, a school district down in Florida is is now allowing satanic pamphlets and coloring books to be passed out in the schools satanic ones but we can't talk about jesus and the disney channel won't allow you to thank god and cnn won't allow you to talk about the gospel because it's offensive <laughs> wow are, are things moving fast um second thessalonians chapter 2 uh verse 6 and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose who's, um, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Antichrist is just waiting in the wings to be revealed on God's time. The church of Jesus Christ is withholding the appearance and revelation of the Antichrist. The Holy Spirit lives in and empowers the church, and that is holding back the evil from taking over completely. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only he who now letteth will let, 
until he be taken out of the way. If you do a, a little study in the Bible about other times when people were taken out of the way, <clears throat> Moses and his family were taken out of the way of the flood. By, they were built an ark and were taken out of the flood and protected. Lot and his family were taken out of the way and removed from Sodom and Gomorrah before the angels and God and destroyed it. They were taken out of the way. And the church is going to be taken out of the way before the wrath of God comes and destroys this world. And all of the signs that Jesus Christ told us to look for are here. It is time to make sure you're ready. So with that, let's get into several more news stories tonight. I'll try to get through this fast. Hopefully I won't talk too fast. You guys can keep up and uh, we'll get this thing done. But first, my, first uh, article I want to cover... Pope Francis's U.S. messenger pro praises Obama executive amnesty, concerned about privacy of illegals. You know, these news stories honestly are giving me a headache. They really are these days. Um, here we go. Pope Francis's U.S. messenger praises Obama exec amnest executive amnesty, concerned about privacy of illegals. On Sunday, the Chicago Archbishop, who has been described as Pope Francis' American messenger, praised Barack Obama's executive amnesty and expressed concerns about the privacy of illegal immigrants who will be coming out of the shadows. Um, <clears throat> he stated that the bishops in the United States are very much in favor of action being taken to protect people who need to come out of the shadows. It's been too long of a time for people to wait for comprehensive immigration reform, and so we see this as an important first step to jumpstart jump what's happening. He, but he's also concerned about the privacy of illegal immigrants, worrying, worrying that illegal immigrants may be deported if a future president reverses Obama's executive amnesty. My concern would be that we would have a policy and a procedure that would have a confidentiality provision because if people come out of the shadows and sign up and give their names and information, uh, and they want to make sure that it's going to be protected in the future should the executive order change by another administration. Um, <clears throat> when asked about his, re his recent remarks, he said, the work of comprehensive immigration reform is not important because it's on my agenda, but because it's on God's, he replied. Um, <clears throat> He said, God has always called, for us, called us to a better life, has always called us to experiencing how we can provide for our families in a better way, and I think being a grandson of immigrants, I feel that very, way very deeply. He goes on to basically talk about how God would be for these illegal immigrants and that we need to take care of them. Well, <clears throat> I think God would support legal immigration, but I can't find too many instances, if any, in the Bible where God promotes anything illegal. And it's just very interesting because this illegal immigration thing, this amnesty thing, is the same thing Pope Francis is promoting, and he's been promoting it in Europe, to the EU. It's another case where Obama and Pope Francis are promoting a lot of the same agenda. Um, <clears throat> let's go to another news story. <clears throat> Liberal or conservative, goal of ruled meeting of families is unity. This is the ruled meeting of families that Pope Francis is coming to in September in Philadelphia. Um, this is out of philly.com. Um, <clears throat> you're hearing more and more and more and more about unity, global globalization, international community, peace, interfaith dialogue. So here's out of philly.com. Um, Goal of world meeting. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> here's what this thing is called. This world meeting on families is actually going to be called the Congress of the World Meeting. The Congress of the World Meeting. Um, it will offer a four day encounter with the Catholic Church's teaching on that tr sometimes troubled, often beautiful thing called family as it plays out in the modern world. Um, the six keynote addresses, 67 workshops that will teach how to support each other in joys and struggles of life. It's open to all faiths. Um, 
and a quarter of its panelists are not Catholics. But um, <clears throat> the, what's interesting about this is when this was first promoted, and, and they first started talking about it, they said, we hope that Pope Francis will come to, to this. We hope he'll come to America. We hope he'll come to this, this uh, gathering, this, um, what, what, this ruled meeting on the family. Well, the, arch, the, the leader of the Archdiocese in Philadelphia, Charles Caput, um, comes up, he says, basically, he, here's what he says. He says, the world meeting is not my program. It is the Holy Father's program. What, again, basically, in other words, Pope Francis is in charge of this thing. It's his program. He's the one pulling this whole thing together, this ruled meeting on families, and it's called the Congress of the World Meeting. Pope Francis, on a daily basis now, is doing everything he can to promote worldwide unity, government, and religion. Um, and it's interesting that now it's coming out that he's basically behind the whole thing. Um <clears throat> I want to touch on another story I've already touched on, but I want to do it real quickly because it's just it's just that important of a story, first of all. And I just want to go back to a couple of points about it. Uh, Pope blasts Christian Muslim fundamentalists while leaving Turkey. This is all Jerusalem Post. Pope Francis is comparing Christian fundamentalists to terrorists. <laughs> Unbelievable. So... Anyway, uh, let me just scroll down here. He says, you just can't say that, just as you, you can't say that all Christians are fundamentalists. We have our share of them. All religions have these little groups, Pope Francis said. In other words, Pope Francis doesn't like Christian fundamentalists. He told us, he says that we're sick, we're a threat, we're dangerous. Um, and apparently he's not a fundamentalist, obviously. Um, but then I want to scroll down here to the bottom of this article, because... Um, in an address at a mass on Sunday, he said the Islamic State were committed were committing a profoundly grave sin against God. Absolutely, that is true, and called for inter-religious dialogue and action against poverty to help end the conflicts in the region. He added that ending poverty was crucial, partly because it gave rise to the recruitment of terrorists. Francis has in the past said that while it is lawful. For the international community to use force to stop an unjust aggressor, aggressor, lasting solutions must be found that tackle the root cause of violence. He seems to think that this jihadist movement in the Middle East has to do with poverty. And it has nothing to do with poverty. It has to do with the spiritual warfare between God and Satan, Christianity and Islam. And the Jewish people. That's what it's about. It has nothing to do with poverty. But Pope Francis is using this as a way to, again, promote the one world government, the one world religion, eventually the mark of the beast system, and control of the resources. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about that as I go into some other news stories tonight. Uh, Times of Israel. A boss decides to go it alone. Mahmoud Abbas, president of the Palestinian Authority, he has effectively closed the door on negotiations with Israel, but Hamas has little cause to rejoice. Fed up with what he views as American procrastination, Israeli intransigence, and Hamas duplicity, Mahmoud Abbas has decided to go it alone. The PA president stood before members of the Arab League in Cairo on Saturday to deliver a semi-annual speech, uh, a seminal speech, excuse me, of disillusionment. He outlined his plan for a series of unilateral moves in the coming weeks, joining international treaties, applying the precepts of the Fourth Geneva Convention to the Palestinian territories, purportedly banning settlement activity under international laws of occupation, acquiring a UN Security Council resolution recognizing Palestine on the 1967 borders, and prescribing a, pi a timetable for Israel's withdrawal, and finally, asking UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for a comprehensive vision on the international protection of the Palestinian people. Um, he, 
He says, we can wait no longer. Status quo is, is untenable. Uh, they're basically just saying we have to have our two-state solution now, and they're going to do everything they can to get it. Um, so, again, that's enough on that. Just giving you an update on what Makamoto Boss is doing, because today there have been a lot of other um, developments that I want to get into. Um, there's going to be a change in government in uh, in Israel. Let's, uh, opposition leader calls for center-left bloc to defeat the prime minister. There's I did a story yesterday about the UN kind of needing to be overhauled. Change so changes possibly to the structure of and the leadership of the United Nations. We've got who knows what's going on with Hamas and the PA, the Palestinian Fatah, their unity government. I hear it's disbanded, not sure. You never know what to believe when it comes to what the Palestinians and Hamas are saying. But there's a possibility of new leadership there or not different government there. We have Frederica Morgherini uh, uh, taking over control of the foreign policy of the European Union. She's been already met with Abbas, Netanyahu, and Kerry. And they've been meeting with... King Hussein of Jordan, excuse me, King Abdullah of Jordan, um, and now there's going to be a new government, possibly a new prime minister in Israel. All this new leadership can certainly help pave the way for the two-state solution and the peace agreement. Oppos opposition leader calls for a center-left bloc to defeat the prime minister. Isaac Herzog says he can lead the country, blames Netanyahu for coalition's failures. Opposition opposition chief Isaac Herzog called for centrist and left leaning parties to rally allow, around him and form a bloc to defeat like good Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in upcoming ele elections. Herzog, who heads the Labour Party, appealed to uh, the Justice Minister Liv Zippy Livni, who, by the way, was fired today. Uh, there were a couple of major firings within the government um, of Israel. Uh, so there's it's there's elections coming. There's a, some big changes coming. He says I am capable of replacing Netanyahu. I will do everything in order to establish a block before the elections. He said in an interview. Uh, Herzog's comments came with the government on the verge of calling early elections on the less than two year old coalition uh, as the less than two year old coalition collapsed amid infighting between Netanyahu and Finance Minister. Yari Lapid, but Lapid and Zippy Livni were fired today. It's very interesting that there could be a new prime minister, new Knesset leaders in Israel with all the call for the two-state solution and the resumption of the peace talks. Uh, again, gosh, there's so much going on. Um, and it just keeps getting, I mean, these news stories are unbelievable. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> Quartet Envoy Blair. Blair, in this sense, is Tony Blair. Quartet Envoy Blair. Overcoming differences of faith, key to resolving Mideast political issues. Here we go again. Interfaith, uh, inter interfaith dialogue. Coexistence. Leading to peace. Tony Blair getting very involved in this. Tony Blair has Tony Blair has his Tony Blair Faith Foundation. Uh, all right, unbelievable. All right, it says President Rivlin, president he's the president of Israel, meets with Mid East Quartet envoy Tony Blair in Jerusalem. The key to resolving the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians is cultural acceptance across the boundaries of faith. Tony Blair, the Middle East envoy of the quartet, told President Reuven Rivlin on Tuesday. Although the two have met on many occasions, this is the first time that Blair had called on Rivlin since the latter became president. Blair said that he believed that crossing the boundaries of faith is the central question of the region and that if this can be achieved, the political problems will also be resolved. <clears throat> it was Rivlin who initially raised the faith issue, saying that although Israel has no war against Islam, there are, unfortunately, extremists on both sides who think that there is a war between Jews and Muslims. 
This is the homeland of the Jewish people and everyone born here, said Rivlin, indicating the inclusiveness of all minority groups whose members are, are Israeli by birth. We are destined to live together, and you are doing so much. He, he, he says to Tony Blair, we are destined to live together, and you are doing so much to bring us to a reasonable way of thinking of how to find a way to live together in peace and with open borders. <clears throat> He said he wanted to emphasize appreciation for Blair's efforts for the people of Gaza who are being held hostage by Hamas. Uh, Blair responded that Rivlin's words on coexistence have resonance not only in Israel, Israel but throughout the world and said that the issues that occupy Israel's interests occupy his own, primarily improving the living standards of the Palestinians and the security of of Israel, he pledged that whatever the political differences and challenges of the region, he will continue with his work. So we've got Pope Francis, we've got Tony Blair, we've got Federico Mogherini of the EU, we've got John Kerry, we've got King Abdullah, and now we've got President Al Sisi from Egypt, all getting involved, calling for the peace agreement and the two-state solution. If you're new to Bible prophecy, if you haven't found my channel before, um, this is this peace agreement is out right out of Daniel chapter nine verse twenty-seven. When the Antichrist shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, which is a seven-year period of time, known as the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's seventieth week, leading up to the return of Jesus Christ, and it is an agreement that will agree to provide for peace and security to Israel. It's going to be involved in this two-state solution, and we're seeing it in the news every single day. All right. Um, <laughs> this, it just keeps going, guys. Check this one out. Um, Ghana team. Uh, UN. Ghana team is up with the UN-backed alliance to facilitate cashless society. Remember, I started off this video talking about the one world government, one world religion, one world monetary system. It'll be a cashless society. The government of Ghana is taking steps toward enhancing fiscal transparency and promoting the financial inclusion of its citizens by committing to a UN backed initiative that supports countries' transitions to electronic payments, a UN statement said on Tuesday. The statement obtained by uh, Payne in New York said that the assistance of the Better Than Cash Alliance, which is hosted by the UN Capital Development Fund, the Ghanaian government would focus on transitioning forms of government payments to electronic ones, beginning with the digitization of government workers' salaries. It said that the government subsequently plans to expand the use of electronic payments to the livelihood empowerment against Poverty. Remember, Pope Francis is blaming poverty on the Mideast turmoil. Po uh, Barack Hussein Obama says he has a plan to eliminate poverty within 10 years. Based on what he's been doing to our economy, I don't quite think I believe him, but that's what he says he has. Barack Obama working on poverty, eliminating poverty. The UN trying to eliminate poverty. Pope Francis, trying to eliminate poverty. So this is the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty Social Welfare Fair Program, with the hope that the 71,000 Ghanaian households will reap the benefits of transparency, cost savings, and financial inclusion. Ghana's digital uh, it's, uh, in, innovation is renowned and is reflected in this commitment to transition away from cash in all government payments. Evidence and the experience of our members shows that electronic payments have great potential to increase people's access to financial services when designed appropriately, and we look forward to seeing greater inclusion in Ghana. There is also strong evidence to show that integrating digital payments into the economies of emerging, emerging countries, such as Ghana, will promote broad economic growth and 
individual financial empowerment. So somehow they're going to try to convince everybody that going cashless digital money is going to somehow eliminate poverty and empower everybody. <laughs> How many more ways can they try to promote a cashless society? Um, all right, let's go to another news story. Lima Conference set to write history ahead of 2015 climate deadline. Here's another UN program. United Nations in Ghana trying to make them go, help them go cashless, promoting that to eliminate poverty. The United Nations has a conference in Lima, Peru uh, about climate change. <clears throat> trying to get it to load. Let me try it again. Come on. Here we go. All right, Lima Conference set to write history ahead of 2015 climate deadline. The inter here we go again. The international community must write history on climate action and build momentum towards a new universal agreement to be adopted in 2015. A senior United Nations official declared today as she opened a two-week UN climate conference held in Lima, Peru. 2014 is likely to be the hottest year on record and emissions continue to rise. We must act with urgency. The Executive Secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change warned in her opening address um, earlier this morning to the 20th session of the Conference of the Parties to the Landmark Treaty. Here in Lima... To aspire to great heights ourselves, we must draw several critical lines of action. According to the uh, conference's agenda, countries will put forward what they propose to contribute to the planned 2015 agreement in the form of intended nationally determined contributions um, by the first quarter of 2015 um, for another conference scheduled in Paris, France, where the new universal UN-backed treaty on climate change will be adopted. Uh, let me scroll down here. Let me just go down here to the very, very end of this. Um, it says, We must consolidate progress on adaptation to achieve political parity with mitigation, given the equal urgency of both. We must enhance the delivery of finance, in particular to the most vulnerable. Finally, we must stimulate ever-increasing action on the part of all stakeholders to scale up the scope and accelerate the solutions that move us all forward faster. With success in these areas, um, it can set the stage for a strong Paris Agreement and increase ambition over time, ultimately fulfilling a long-term vision of climate neutrality in the pursuit of of development that is truly sustainable for all. That's the key phrase of this whole article. Tr sustainable development. This is a conference being ran by the United Nations. If you do not know anything about Agenda 21, let me read you uh, what, it's, what, what, they're, what they are. It's United Nations... Sustainable development. That's what the phrase was used at the end of that article in this conference in Lima, Peru. I've been talking about combating poverty. Here's their section one, agenda 21, social and economic dimensions. International cooperation to accelerate sustainable development in developing countries and related domestic policies. Combating poverty. Changing consumption patterns. In other words, they want to change how we can buy and sell things and what we have access to, how we can use our resources. Mark of the beast. Can't buy or sell without it. Demographic dynamics and sustainability. Protecting and promoting human health conditions. Promoting sustainable human settlement development. Integrating environment and development in uh, decision making. Who gets to make all these decisions about how we use our resources, where we can live, what we can buy, how much we can eat? Eventually, the false prophet and the Antichrist, the one world, new world order. Uh, section 2, conservation and management of resources. Protecting the atmosphere. 
Uh, integrated approach to planning and management of land resources. Combating deforestation. Uh, promoting sustainable agriculture and rural development. Um, Rational use and development of living resources. You need to really look into this, guys. It's a, it's a total totalitarian control of the environment, the resources, the food, land. And, and look at what Obama's doing. Look at what Pope Francis is doing. Look at what Tony Blair's doing. It's all coming together. This Agenda 21 and the United Nations program. It's a global, international community program to control our resources. It's not a good thing. All right, I have uh, two more news stories. I'll be your Sheva today. <clears throat> Kerry hopes next Knesset... Where happened... Kerry hopes next Knesset holds peace talks. <clears throat> Kerry calls on next Israeli government to negotiate after his previous talks torpedoed by PA. By the way, France also voted today to recognize Palestinian state. The UN Secretary of State John Kerry responded to uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to disband the Knesset. Kerry said that whatever government will be formed, he hoped it would be able to, to negotiate and move towards resolving differences between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Um, that's enough on that. But again, like I said earlier with the other news story, uh, the fact that there's going to be a new government in Israel, the Israeli people are willing to give up land, they want peace. Out of, basically, at this point, at any cost, it seems, they want peace and security. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 says, For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. Now, one more news story. Jordan pushing for UN resolution on Israel PA peace talks. This is all the rut show today. Jordan says it will be presenting a UN resolution on Israel PA talks in the coming weeks. It's funny because... <laughs> Just yesterday, I reported on the fact that Jordan sent a scathing letter to Israel warning them about the Temple Mount. Now they're trying to push Israel into peace. It's amazing how they're sur Israel is surrounded by nations that will not even recognize them as a Jewish state. And their world is turning their back on Israel, forcing them to give up the land. And we really think that it's going to lead to peace. You can see why the Bible says, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. Jordan on Tuesday launched a bid to win backing for a UN resolution on a final Israeli-Palestinian settlement that could be presented to the Security Council in the coming weeks. Jordan's ambassador to the UN said she would be meeting with representatives from Arab countries and council members to gauge whether there is support for a unified text on advancing Israeli-Palestinian Authority peace. If a consensus can be reached, a draft resolution re would be presented to the council later this month or in January. We are going to try to make it before Christmas. If not, it will be in January. We really want everyone to get on board. That's our intention. The PA, which is being backed by the Arab League, has been pushing for a draft resolution that calls for ending the Israeli occupation by November 2016. Last week, I reported that Benjamin Netanyahu said he would be willing to discuss peace based on the Arab initiative. Um, and th th here we are. It's, it's, just, it's starting to come together. The text ran into opposition from the United States and other members of the council, uh, uh, opening the way for the Europeans, led by France, to begin talks on a separate draft that would set a time frame for ending the negotiations. <clears throat> The French are moving more and more, trying to bring all the European colleagues together, and I think eventually they will succeed. Um, French Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius told Parliament last week that a final settlement should be reached within two years, 
It remains unclear whether the United States, which has vetoed UN resolutions seen as critical of Israel, would support a text to restart the peace process. Jordan's push at the United Nations came as France, France's National Assembly voted in favor of recognizing Palestine in a non-binding measure similar to those adopted in Britain, Spain, and Ireland. Denmark is also planning to hold a vote, while Sweden has taken an additional step of offering recognition Palestine. So all the European Union nations are coming together to recognize Palestinian state. It's starting to look more and more doubtful whether the United States would still back Israel and veto this vote in the United Nations Security Council because there's too much international pressure against them not to. And nations like France and Britain, who are our allies, are voting for it. We know that the two-state solution is coming. We know that, um, that the peace agreement is going to get signed. The Antichrist is going to be revealed. All the signs are here. I can't believe how fast all of these news stories are developing and how they're all related and they're all coming together. I can't believe how many people are out there promoting the one world religion and the one world government. The New World Order, it is coming together so fast. All the signs that Jesus Christ told us to look for are here. He is the only hope. He says himself, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. He told us he would come back, and he's given us the signs to look for, signaling his return. And he's going to return for his church. I read Second Thessalonians about the restraining power. And I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 real quick and close it down with that. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the rule to try them that dwell upon the earth. Jesus Christ is going to return for his church. The question is, will you be going with him? Are you ready? If you are not, Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Ask Him to save you. Repent of your sin. And then keep looking up because He is on His way. All the signs are here. God bless everyone.